Well, I'll be damned, there's a lot of anime this summer and only two of them are sequels. That is... good. Probably. At the very least, that means diversity of choice, which from a consumer perspective is always a positive thing, and to underline the positiveness, because I needed to keep our morale in check, let's start the season with something silly and unexpected. Isekai Maoto Shokan Shoujo no Dori Majutsu, which from now on I'll call Budget Overlord, is a 12-episode anime developed by these people, which I'm more than certain is a light novel adaptation, though don't quote me on that. The plot certainly feels like something either a light novel or a hentai artist would make, but since infestation is a thing, it's entirely possible I haven't read new manga and don't know the trends. So the plot is trapped in another world, but with a twist. There's this MMO game that is the best and most massively played, etc., and there's this dude named John Smith or something similar, and he's the best player of this game, who sold all of the bosses and is so invincible that he's practically became a raid boss in his own right, and you know the drill by now. This has become somewhat of a trend in these stories. The one who's trapped in a game world is always either a developer or a player so good good he might as well be one, and it's always an MMO, by the way. I don't know any anime where the player is trapped in a single-player game, like, I don't know, Doom. But anyway, he gets summoned into this world as his character Diablo by these two girls that are immediately enslaved because Diablo is that awesome, but because in reality he's a shy nerd with zero social skills, he is stuck playing the role of a demon lord, and do you now realize why I chose to call it Budget Overlord? For all intents and purposes, Mamonga and Diablo's John Smiths are the same. The only difference is that Mamonga can't really fuck up due to his racial skills, while Diablo has to constantly roleplay a big bad demon lord because of his social skills. Not gonna lie, I expected this to be a shitty isekai harem anime. The wish fulfillment fantasy written by people who never played an MMO game in their entire life but have to con money out of people somehow, and to my utter surprise, Budget Overlord is actually not that bad. It's certainly a harem anime, alright, where fan service and the mighty titty ass reign supreme, but it's less of a stereotypical harem anime and more like the old school harem anime, you know, where the girls have actual character. Though the story is generic, the character interaction is the best part of the show for me, in many ways due to superb voice acting and interesting situations the characters face. As a main character, Diablo isn't annoying in the slightest. He's perfectly rounded and his motivations, though a bit unclear at first, are very basic and relatable. The bumbling idiot and the stone-cold badass scenes are quite balanced and organic in action, which is a very good thing. The girls, Ram the Neko and Shera the Elven Tits, besides fan service, are also quite autonomous characters in their own right and travel through an incomplete but noticeable character arcs, which is also a good Good thing. There are, however, some things I didn't like. The slave colors, for example. The story tries to portray these things as something important, yet in reality they're just a gimmick that moves the plot and nothing more. Diablo uses the properties of these colors only twice throughout the entire anime, which, while in character, kinda negates the point of them and makes them a cool looking fashion accessory at best. Diablo's power level is also a thing that mildly annoyed me. Not the level itself, mind you, but rather how other characters react to it. There's a lot of scenes, both comedic and non-comedic, where other characters either acknowledge or directly fear the power Diablo wields, yet whenever the bad guy starts doing his evil plan, it's as if they are either forgetting that Diablo exists or forget all the previous shit he done, which can get slightly irritating, especially when all of your evil plan is built on, I don't know, ignoring the guy who defeated an elven weapon of mass destruction, and then a level 100 warrior, and then petrified a paladin, and then summoned and tamed a demon lord while you watched it all happen, you incompetent gremlin. Otherwise, the show is decently made, but nothing out of the ordinary. The graphics are generic, the music is so generic, I think I heard some of it in a couple of fantasy anime before. The fan service is surprisingly tame if you take slave colors and characters' story into consideration. I watched the show uncensored, and honestly, I struggled to see what had to be censored for it to be broadcasted on television. Out of all the isekai anime of this year, I think this one is the crown example of how to do it right. It's not the best thing I've ever seen out of this genre genre, but it's certainly not the worst. It's light enough to be binge-watched and entertaining enough to actually be invested into the story, and that's all that matters for me in the end of the day. And now is the part where I jinx all of my goodwill on some shit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 